I'm going to go over this single stock tracker. Uh, basically what it allows you to do is track the activity for one particular stock and all the activity. So the stock activity, your buys and sells, your dividend activity, uh, if you're getting dividends, and any options activity, whether you're writing calls or selling calls or wh whatever. Uh, again, it looks at just one stock. So if you wanted to look at other stocks, um, you'd have to just duplicate the tab and track that other stock in there. Uh, first off, if you want to get this tracker, you go to file and then make a copy and that would make a copy to your Google Drive. Uh, you don't have to request it for me at all. Uh, you can do it that way. Or I believe you can download it as well. You can download it as one of these. I think you'd have to download it as an Excel file or something else. Uh, if you download it as an Excel file though, uh, you lose all the Google functions. So that's something to keep in mind. So like I mentioned, it looks at different types of activity. So in this one, it's looking at Hasbro. And say, for example, you bought Hasbro 100 shares at $50, and you sold it later on for $100 or $51. Uh, sells in this activity, again, this section is just for buys and sells. Um, your buying is going to be positive. Your selling is going to be negative. Uh, and that conceptually makes sense um, because you're going to be getting money for selling the stock. And when you buy the stock, the price is going to be negative, so you're spending money. Uh, the tranches over here are really important because this is what is used to group the selling activity. So if you buy a stock and sell a stock, um, they group them together based on this uh, on that tranche. So just be mindful of that. It, it could be anything. It doesn't have to be T1. It could be uh, ABC. But just make sure if you're uh, whatever you put for the buy tranche, you find the corresponding sell tranche uh, for it and put the same group ID. For other activity, so a dividends activity, um, this is based off the ex-dividend date and it uses the ex-dividend date and the dates you use here in your purchase area to calculate how many shares are actually going to be allocated for the dividend. So for example here, if you since we bought it on the 1st of January 2022, the ex-dividend date is the 31st. So what this function does, it looks at uh, any of the stock uh, purchase before uh, this date, which is the hundred dollars or hundred shares. If we were to change this to thirty-one, which is the ex-dividend date, you'd see that it just turns to zero because if you purchase stuff on the ex-dividend date, you don't get the dividend. If you purchase it on the thirtieth, here, uh, then you'd get the dividend. So then it'll be allocated. Um, this function here, you really don't need if you just want to put in the date you've received dividend, the dividend, and not. Uh, the ex dividend date because they, maybe that's more uh, easier to get from your brokerage system. Um, you could just put that in and then paste over the formula or just get rid of the formula and everything would still work out uh, because this is just timesing or multiplying the dividend uh, per share times the number of shares and that will give you your amount. Uh, even that you could write over if you wanted to and just paste the actual amount. It still would sum up uh, in the end. Uh, so how do you get the ex dividend date? So like I mentioned, this is uh, dynamic in the ticker area. Uh, and then you have the section here, dividends. Uh, you can see it's manual entry for the actual dividends per share, uh, but this dividend URL is where you can get um, dividend information. So it just looks at the NASDAQ um, and you can just navigate to that site and scoop up the dividend there. So what else? This section here uh, I didn't mention is just general stock information. So it has uh, price, pieces, so the high, low, current price, your cost basis, so uh, what you're entering in here, it'll calculate the cost basis for that. And then, like I mentioned here, this is the dividend. Um, it gives you your, the market yield, your yield, based on the dividend or uh, the shares you have. And then your income information, annual income, quarterly income, and your monthly income, based on the number of shares you have again. Uh, and then there's this piece here, which I found pretty interesting. It's called the target yield. Um, pretty much, since it's light yellow, it's um, not mandatory that you enter in, unlike these pieces. Uh, but here you can actually enter in anything you want. So for, say, for example, you were looking at this stock and you didn't want to buy it just yet uh, unless you were getting a 6% dividend rate on it or yield on it. Right now, it's giving a yield of 5.5%. Um, and yeah, say your target 6%. In order to get that target of 6%, the price would need to go down to $46.67. And this would tell you right here um, the 
change in the price that would be needed in order to get this target price. So it looks at the current price and sees the the distance away from uh, the current price, which is about almost 10%. If you look at it, look at this in conjunction with the information up here, you could see that 46 is near the 52 week low. Um, so it's not completely out of the range of possible numbers for this particular stock. Um, so it could just give you a better sense of if this yield, your target yield is um, achievable or not. Say, for example, if you're looking for something like a 10% yield on this, uh, it would have to drop considerably from the current price. And then at that point, it, the fundamentals may have changed um, and the stock might not even pay paying the same dividend uh, at that point. So yeah, I find that pretty useful. And then this last piece is the gains. So this was your unrealized gains based on the market price, your dividend income, your options income or losses, your realized gains and losses. And then it just sums all these up to get your total um, gains and losses and then gives you your total return based on uh, the money you have invested. And then this nice little chart here that shows you for each of these buckets where they kind of stand to give you in the makeup of your total return, how they offset each other pretty much. Uh, yeah, so we went over the dividend piece, uh, so pretty much you just enter the dividends, same thing with your stock activity, your buys and sells, you enter them in, just make sure you have your negative um, stock shares if it's if you're selling a stock, and then the tranches when you're selling to make sure to keep them in or allocate them to the same group. And then uh, for options activity, it's kind of the same thing. Um, these two pieces are going to be kind of like the tranche. So these are going to be used to group the stock in the options return, so the expiration date and the strike. And the reason I do that is because then you can write multiple uh, or enter in multiple contracts for the same expiration date and strike and kind of play with it to see how you're going to be either up or down based on the different contracts that you're entering in or selling or buying. So the things that matter here are these action pieces. The actual type of option, whether it's a call or a put, really doesn't matter in the calculation. It's really the actions, whether you're selling to open, buying to close, buying to open, or selling to close. The selling pieces are the ones that are going to be positive, the buying pieces are going to be negative, um, and by that I mean in the price. So for this, when you're selling to open, um, you're getting a premium on that, so you're getting paid uh, to do that. For selling to close, you're not necessarily getting a premium but you're getting your money back for what you're putting in. And then buying to open and buying to close, uh, you're spending money. So you're buying back the option to close it out or you're buying it to open it. Say for example, in a call, you're buying in the option uh, thinking that the price is gonna go up. So for selling to open, for call or put, um, that's gonna populate this field uh, called cash and use. And this is pretty much saying that uh, for this one contract uh, at a 51 strike, you have to put up in collateral or in stock um, this amount of money. And then this yield takes the price that you're being paid, whether it's premium or whatever, and then just divides that by the cash that's being used in a sense to show you what your yield on this cash would be. And yeah, and then it takes again, this section here just takes those two expirations and then just sums those up. Say, for example, you wanted to write this put, but then wanted to close it out so you could release the cat, the capital and use it somewhere else. You do a buy to close, do a put, put in the same information, and then whatever you paid for it, say 10 cents, say you close it at 10 cents. Uh, this field really doesn't, really doesn't matter, um, but you could use it later if you wanted to put in other fields in here. Uh, but like I was mentioning, if you go back to the return area, you can see that you're not, your return is now $100 because you originally were paid $110, then you spent $10 to close it out, which means you gained uh, $10, $100 on that particular contract. So that's pretty much it. All your options activity you can track, all your dividend activity you can track. Uh, just one other thing for the stock returns, like I was mentioning, the, the tranche is there. Um, and then you have your return here. But the one that the return that's used in the summary section is actually after tax. Uh, and I do that because you're going to have to pay some tax on your capital gains. Uh, it may not be 35%, but I'm assuming 35. If you didn't want to do any tax at all, um, you could put zero and that will give you the same amount 
that's seen in this column. But I put 35 just so you can, because you're going to have to pay tax at some point. Uh, for performance summary, so that goes down to performance summary, and you can see once you fill all those areas out, um, you can see how your gains and losses balance out. So in this example, if you have an unrealized loss of about 20%, um, that's kind of offset by the dividends that you've gotten, offset by the capital gain or the options call that you wrote, and offset by the initial uh, stock that you sold at the very beginning. So now this 30, this 20% loss or 21% loss is now about a 3% loss, which isn't as bad. So if you wanted to exit the stock, get your money back and use it somewhere else, you have a little more information on how to make that decision. Uh, another example, say, uh, say you bought this in 2020 and you didn't sell the stock. So you didn't sell the stock. You didn't get the tranche, and you could sort this by the date, no impact. Um, yeah, so now you have 150 shares. And let's put this to the first so you can get that last dividend. So you see here it's uh, zero because you bought it on the 30th, but if you change it to the first, now you get that dividend. So now, if you bought it back in 2020, been holding the stock, uh, and then bought it at a high again more recently, uh, you'd be still looking at a loss because your cost basis is now 55, the current price is 51. Uh, so you're looking at a little bit of loss, about 6% or 7%. Uh, but then you have all these other pieces. You've been collecting dividend income that entire time. You still wrote the option. You don't have any realized gains, but your total gain and loss is now about 8% on this one stock. So. Maybe you can just exit the stock now and use your money elsewhere instead of just sitting around waiting for the price to go up. And you can see that here. Your unrealized gains are here, and the dividends have pretty much eclipsed uh, all the unrealized market losses that you've gotten, and the other activity you've done has put yourself a little better than where you were before. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much like some of the benefits I see, at least from this uh, perspective, of doing it that way. Uh, let's see what else I showed you that oh okay and this last piece here this chart here uh, I'm put this in here to kind of just give you a sense of your buying behavior so say for example you're doing something like this I'm gonna take this as an example put it here okay say you've been buying the stock and buying it around these like weird numbers so not in like the typical whole lots or even the like round numbers. You're just buying, whenever you see it kind of drop below, um, buying around the 99 cent area or like dropping the cents and just looking at the whole numbers. So you're thinking you're buying 0 0.52, 0 0.52, 51, 49, 49, and you only bought 153 from that perspective. But if you look at your buying behavior, and this is all rounded uh, because it's rounding 52 up to 53, uh, just to give you a better sense of like where you're actually buying this stock at. You're not buying it at 52, it's more like 53. You can see that the majority you're buying was around 53, and then you're buying more so towards the bottom half uh, in smaller numbers. So you're kind of concentrated in the higher number. Um, and that could be because of maybe FOMO or some other reason. Um, I would think that it could be due to that psychological principle where people tend to buy things around the 99 cent mark or just drop off the cents and just look at the first half and think they're getting a deal especially when the price is going down on something so that's just there to kind of guide you to see if your buying behavior is kind of leaning towards more one uh one particular bucket but yeah it's just there i don't know how useful it is i've i tend to find it useful sometimes but Again, the meat and potatoes is the gain and loss piece that I find pretty useful. And again, it's more so about exiting a stock, when to exit a stock, um, and if the gains on other pieces are kind of outweighing the perception. Uh, one particular one in, that I've seen is like these yield traps. For example, they say PSEX a yield trap. Um, that pays um, monthly. And say, for example, you're doing that let me go to PSEX dividend so you can see it in action <laughs> so yeah it's been paying six cents for quite a bit so you could just copy this really from the 
from the site because you really only need a couple numbers. And you can just use this at end as a scratch area. And yeah, you just need this one. Let me just delete that. And you can just take these. You can now start playing around with it on this end. Yeah. So say you've had PSEC and say you bought it for the high, the 52 week high. Say you bought a thousand shares of that. And you just bought it, didn't do anything after that since 2020. So you paid ten, almost $10,000 to buy this. And during that time, what has it been doing? It's been paying a dividend the entire time. Say you've been holding this since 2021. The entire time uh, and let me just get rid of this as well so you didn't do any calls didn't do any options you're just collecting the dividend you bought it once and just been collecting the dividend the entire time and that you can see yeah you're sitting on a pretty sizable loss about 18 percent uh, but the dividends are helping to kind of offset that so total you're at a two percent return which isn't the best but it's not as bad as 18% loss on a total stock uh, basis because the dividends have been paying off uh, some of the losses that you've seen. And again, this is assuming that you bought at the top. Say you bought at a little bit higher than the current price. 1,000 shares back then. You've been collecting the dividend for since January 2021. You are looking at a slight loss, but the dividends have paid off um, that amount, that loss, and covering it. So you're getting about a 23% return just on that one stock uh, and the money you invested in. Uh, so yeah, again, it's just to give you some perspective on a stock, how much the dividends contribute to you know, lowering your cost basis, um, and then any options activity you run on that and the impact you ha it has on your uh, total stock performance. And again, it's really to assess if you should stay in the stock and sell or if you're looking at market losses um, if the dividend activity or the options activity that you're doing uh, kind of helps offset that to kind of cut your losses and use the money somewhere else yeah so that's pretty much it guys um, i hope that helps um, any other ideas really appreciate it and thanks for watching